And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection, brought to you by Rio Tinto Alcan. Welcome back. Today joining us is Morgan Baldwin with the Ending Violence Association, also known as EVA. Uh, we were discussing violence against women, and part of that, too, we didn't touch much base on is sexual violence. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot, too, unfortunately. Uh, do you mind going into some detail about the services available for that and the problems with that issue? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think it's important to be aware that sexual violence, again, the most common place that it happens is within the context of a relationship, whether that's dating or common law or married relationships, and it's one of the hardest things to talk about. And so there's not a lot of discussion about that, but there's a lot of sexual violence within relationships. Um, so again, really important for people to know that they can reach out for help to programs like Kassan Society's Community-Based Victim Services and counselling programs. Um, there is a lot of also sexual violence um, outside of the context of relationships, and it's another massive problem worldwide, including in British Columbia. And I think that what's happened is we do have a lot more attention on domestic violence than we do on sexual violence, even within the context of a relationship. So we know, for example, if somebody is being sexually violent within their relationship, it's a risk factor that could indicate they're a lot more likely to seriously injure or kill their partner. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stories, terrible stories, about young women experiencing sexual violence, and a lot of what we've seen, um, including with the recent um, trial of Cody Lejabokov, is a lot of young men who are being sexually violent to girls and women, and um, a lot of them are ending up killing their the victims. And so it's a really um, lethal risk factor on its own. It's a terrible thing to have to deal with, but it's also an indicator that somebody is at a fairly high level of, of abuse, whether it's in their relationship or with strangers. It's a real, a real warning sign. Uh, How can women protect themselves from this? Well, knowing, um, I think that you know that there is a risk and having there's a lot of great programs that have been done about helping understand what consent actually is what the law says about consent and that you do have the right to to consent to any kind of sexual activity and that it doesn't look like you know standing up and shouting and saying no for it to have to be a, a sexual assault um, I think a lot of girls are doing really great things young girls in particular are at high risk for sexual violence and so they're doing great things like just keeping an eye on their friends at parties and um, you know educating each other in that way just being being good buddies to each other and knowing that the risks are there so really having each other's backs those are some of the exciting things that we see happening and a lot of on university campuses you've seen a lot of the concerns about the rape culture and the the kinds of sexual violence that happens there and so lots of really great programs that young women and young men are creating that are about educating each other and holding each other accountable and supporting each other which is great to see where the EVA is involved in a, a multi-year project that's a Western Canada partnership with the four Western provinces to look at sexual violence and what we can do and one of the things we know we need is a policy in, in British Columbia there's no sexual assault policy for the province like there is a violence against women in relationships policy and really important step. Now um, just refining it uh, just to make it very specific but for mm -hmm. men who are doing this kind of stuff is there mm -hmm. programs that they can reach through through EVA? Um, the problem with programming for men who are abusive in British Columbia is that it's mostly for people who've been through the court process and they're court mandated. So there's some great programming through corrections, but that's once somebody's been charged and um, convicted and sentenced. And so what we're what we really see the gap in, we don't provide the service, but we're certainly calling for it is for more programs for boys and men who are concerned about their behavior and want to want to change at an earlier stage when they're when they're concerned about their behavior or somebody else is concerned about their behavior something where they can access um, programs that are um, based in experience mm -hmm. that aren't kind of buying into the myths about why this kind of stuff goes on thank you again for joining us you're welcome and i really encourage people to check out our website endingviolence.org as well there's a lot of in great information on there Great, right, thank you so yeah. much. Now that's all for this episode of Open Connection. To get a closer look at local events in the Northwest, join me weeknights at seven right after the news.